and these corrupt politicians that are sitting in their offices, they need to know what we're demanding so that when the time comes and election season comes, they will not get a single vote and we will tell them it's because they did not meet our demands. It's important to keep reminding ourselves and the public our first demand is an immediate arms embargo to be placed on the Zionist terrorist regime. Our second demand is the immediate release of the over 10,000 Palestinian hostages that have been taken by the Zionist regime. This entire has been to, to, to retrieve these so-called hostages. The ones that they're killing themselves. The same hostages that are coming out on video saying we're not scared of the resistance. We're scared of Netanyahu because he's the one that's going to bomb us. We have our own hostages that we really do care about and we will see their release, inshallah.
war contracts where the Canadian government is promising to continue to send weapons to this terrorist entity. Of, 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 of 
tyrannizing us and trying to oppress us. Go find, go find the racist people who march with the truck on Islamophobic identity. Thank you against us. Where is your money on the losers? For several months of us. You haven't found it? Well, I don't feel safe to do that. You know, if you are not able to find a criminal basis, then what are you doing? Trying to mobilize those Palestinian supporters, and those are supporters are not only Arabs, they are not only Muslims, they are Canadians, Canadians from all walks of life. was attacked and we have the bully, the Premier of Ontario, standing on a podium and making remarks about indignance. And, 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 and next to him, next to him, was the so-called mayor of Toronto, the mayor for nothing and everything. And on the other side, was the gesture to go. Well, you are racist and bigots for being there and not walking away from it. You know, as I said, I don't want to be polite. Some of the 40 clan committed the criminal acts. And the records are out there. Do we say the whole 40 clan are criminals? We don't. But we have no decency to paint every one of us with the same brush. And many of those incidents are supposed to find out who they are. And my own suspicion, maybe they are all internal. Stuff being done by close Zionists who claim that they are the victims. They claim to be a victim at universities. They claim to be a victim in the street. They claim to be victims at colleges. Where are they? With the 40 plus thousand victims on Gaza, where they haven't said anything. Because we know, because we know those ethnic organizations, Zionists and pro Israel, they are genocidal and supporters of genocide. And everyone, every politician, every police leadership, who doesn't stand with them is in the same shameless boat. So, brothers and sisters, is it coincidence that the United States, UK, France, Germany, Australia are the main supporters of the United States? It's not a coincidence, but they are the fathers and the grandfathers of settler colonialism. They committed endless massacre and genocide about the first Aboriginal people in North America, in New Zealand, in Australia, in Africa, and in Asia, and many places of the world. So those states who claim to have democracy, they are bold-faced liars. They are, they are utter shame for so-called leadership. But you, my friends, are the ones who is carrying the torch and raising the voice for free Palestine from the river to the sea. Free Palestine from the river to the sea. That means the end of the Yemen state as it is, let it be.
I'm a first for many years before. When people ask you about October 7, ask them what about 48. Ask them about the Sydney Forum and the only theory when the colonial Zionists, with the support of the British, committed many genocide against Palestinians. From Katura, we threw our shoe on their face. I told them no more privacy. No more. No, those are not Arab sisters. Those are not Arabs. Maybe they have Arab names. They are not Arabs. Anyway, what I want to say to you is don't lose face. Don't give up. Stay solid. Stay steadfast for the support of our brothers and sisters in Palestine, all Palestine, and in Lebanon, and for every resistance against occupation and colonialism everywhere on this world. And by saying, again, from the river to the sea, there are cities and college. Don't be afraid of who you are and what you stand for. If anything happens, reach to us. And we are willing to confront all Zionists and their supporters, be it however they are. Against 
the resistance, to, to, to make them acquiesce in the face of imperialist and colonial demands. Shame! Yeah. The Israeli government has not only consistently bombed and besieged the Gaza Strip for the past year, they have besieged Gaza for the last 17 years with limited access to food, medicine, and fuel. Shame! Yeah. This Israeli Zionist terrorist regime has also engaged in bombing operations in Lebanon and in Yemen and in Iraq and in Syria and in Iran and everywhere where resistance is. This Zionist terrorist regime, with the help of Canada and the U.S., is killing non-combatants to turn us against the resistance. Shame! But what they do not know, what they do not know, is that the people are the resistance, and the resistance are from the people. So we will never turn our backs on the resistance. And so they can try again and again to assassinate people and leaders. And they can try to bomb our people in their homes, in their tents, in their hospitals. But we will never turn from the path of liberation because we know as soon as we acquiesce, as soon as we become silent, as soon as we put our rifles down, we will be in victims of further colonization and exploitation. And so we know from the past 76 years that the only path to liberation is the path of fierce armed resistance. <laughs> As these people walk by and these media outlets say that we're the terrorists for resisting our invaders, while they're silent as they're, they're, they're planting explosives and mobile devices in the pages of doctors and nurses in Lebanon. They're silent on real terrorism. Shame! So just as the Canadian and U.S. government collaborate and fund and armed the Zionist terrorist regime. We must also unite and collaborate and coordinate towards the downfall of settler colonialism from Turtle Island to Palestine. <laughs> Structure and killing our people is because the resistance is effective. It's what, if it was not effective, then they would not be frantically spreading a war throughout the Middle East. If we were not effective in these streets, if our voices did not matter, then these police officers would not be mobilizing to arrest and brutalize us. If we were not effective, then the media would not be demonizing us so much. But it is because the path of resistance and our mobilization is the only way to cross to achieve liberation that they are afraid. They are afraid of our resistance. They are afraid of our popular credo. So let us continue this mobilization and this resistance generation after generation and show off and the So our last speaker today, our last speaker, is a youth, a Lebanese youth that is here to talk about what has recently happened. So everyone, please make some noise. Thank you. As Lebanese, we're often asked all the time when we come out to these marches and our flags, why we support the Palestinian people? Why is our support so unwavering for these people? The reason is, is that Lebanon went through 18 years of occupation. From 1982 to 2000, we went through 18 years of massacre, 18 years of war, and then we kicked them out. <laughs> Lebanon has paid in blood with over 650 martyrs for Gaza. After the occupation ended, they continued to bomb us. They continued to commit atrocities to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. 
This is unacceptable. This week, the Zionist, the Zionist entity committed two massacres. What crime did the Lebanese people deserve? What crime did the Lebanese people commit to deserve this? They refused to leave their land. They refused to leave the land that we never left, that we've always lived in. After yesterday's terrorist attack that killed 37 people and three children, we had to text, we all had to text our family and cousins to make sure that they're still alive. The text I got back from my cousin was and I quote, this makes me wonder what the people in Gaza endure daily. Their empathy for Gaza is unwavering. Their empathy for Gaza is un unparalleled to anyone else. <laughs> refuse to condemn. And so no one will support the Palestinian people like the people of Lebanon. None of us are free until you are all free. We will get our justice until both of our occupied land is free. From Shab'a to Akka, from al Naura to Haifa, from Gaza to Al-Aqsa, we will all return. I want to leave you guys with some famous words from that. I want to address everyone that tells the Lebanese people that we need to leave the struggle. Leave the Palestinian struggle and you'll have safety. Leave the Palestinian struggle and you'll be in peace. We'll cross you off, we'll cross you off the list of terrorism. We'll stop calling you terrorists. Stop supporting Palestine. To them, terrorism is resistance. To them, terrorism is defense of our land. It's supporting the Palestinian people. It's the defense of our churches. It's the, it's the defense of our mosques. It's the defense of our dignity. And to them, I want to say, you promise the Palestinian people, you promise us safety, but you don't promise the people of Palestine safety. The people of Palestine have no safety. The children of Palestine have no safety. The women of Palestine have no safety. Take your safety, take your safety and go curse your safety. Thank you. I know that sometimes it may feel like our work here is not bringing us closer to our aspirations. But we have to remember that nothing we do will ever be enough for what our people in Gaza are going through. But we should continue to our best to keep going through to get every small win. An example is two weeks ago when the Liberal government announced that they suspended 30 permits to Israel held by Canadian companies. And that is a direct result of our work. It's our role to continue to apply this pressure to this complicit government. We know that they're not going to listen to our demands by simple words. So it's our duty as the Palestinian and Arab diaspora in Canada to take control of our power and force our way to a liberated Palestine from the belly of the beast. The people united will never be and defeated! I want to say one thing to the Arab youth in the crowd. It's on us to carry the torch of the generations before us. So I want to mention the PYM, we're having two volunteer meetings in the next couple of weeks. We're building up towards the regional rally to commemorate one year of the genocide, but more importantly, one year of resistance and steadfastness of our people in Gaza. That's all I'm so We have to come together, we have to build together, we have to organize our community on a liberated front to pave the path towards a liberated Palestine. We have work to do here. So Arab youth, allies, sign up at um, our bio on Instagram at PYM Toronto. Uh, there's uh, sign up forms, fill that out, and hopefully we'll see you there. Thank you.
All right, folks, so before we end, we also want to just bring attention to one more thing that happened in the past week. Um, so recently there was a vote at the UN General Assembly and the majority of the world, over 100 states, have voted, have voted with confidence to say that Israel is in fact an apartheid state, a colonial state, and that its occupation of Palestinian land is illegal. The UN General Assembly has voted for sanctions on the Israeli government and the Israeli regime. And that this sanct these sanctions include academic boycotts, and divestment and all of the things that we've already been been demanding including at the demands of the students at UFT and now we have the world the whole world's consensus saying this so we must continue to push for our demands but one thing of note is that the Canadian ambassador to the UN Bob Ray abstained from that vote Shame. we know that this is nothing new that this is not a blip in Canada's history. But Canada's history is one of bloody colonialism and dispossession. And what they're doing now is only a continuation of what they've been doing for the last 150 years. We also know that what the UN is voting on is sanctions on Israel and for Israel to withdraw from the Palestinian occupied territories but what they're talking about is what different than what we're talking about. We're talking about all of Palestine, from the river to the sea. We're not here to talk about any two-state so-called solutions where they hypnotize us into sitting idly as they bomb and take our land. We will not go that path ever again. The path of Oslo is dead and in the ground, and we will. So while we welcome, we welcome this vote at the UN General Assembly, and we welcome this sentiment that is growing in the world, the masses of the world who make this happen, all around the world, pushing their governments to hold Israel accountable. We welcome it. But we also want to make sure that everyone knows when we talk about liberation, we're not talking about enclaves in the West Bank and Gaza, which is bombed to smithereens now. We're talking about the expulsion of all Zionist structures and all of Zionism from the river to the sea and all of the Arab regions. On that note, we thank you all for coming out. Like my comrade said, please show up to our volunteer meetings if you'd like to get involved in the movement. Protests are great. We need to show our numbers and show strength, but we also need to get organized. We need to all contribute to the cause in whatever way we can. If you're a photographer, we need photographers. If you can do graphic design, we need that. Every skill set can help the liberation movement, and liberation will only come when all of us are united and contributing to this movement. Took any flags from the organizers, please bring them back. If you took any flags or signs or anything like that, please return them. We will be back, we will be mobilizing, and we will make sure that when election time comes, all of these politicians that are nowhere to be seen will be held accountable, and none of them will see a single vote. First, we don't want people to linger in the streets. We want to make sure that we're staying safe. If you need help getting back to your station, please come and talk to us. You can have a marshal escort you to your car or your station. Thank you.